let's start with the beginning. Uh, my name is Dennis Gundriff. I'm a senior program manager at Remote Desktop Services Group at Microsoft. Uh, and uh, it's Remote Desktop Services and WVD uh, in the same group. Two big things happening all together. Uh, I'm uh, working for Microsoft uh, uh, one and a half years. Uh, and uh, I'm responsible for the protocol, um, RDP protocol, if you don't know what kind of protocol we use. Uh, RDP protocol uh, in terms of graphics and networking. And uh, today's presentation, I actually have an agenda for it. Uh, an agenda is uh, random things in a random order. And the reason is that uh, uh, this session is not about uh, RDP. It's not about WVD. It's uh, it's not a commercial session. It's a session where I want to talk about uh, how the protocols work, and uh, most of the things are applied to all of the protocols. And uh, so I prepared this presentation as a uh, like a brief introduction in, in a few technologies that uh, are used in the protocols today uh, in these times. Because uh, uh, since I started working for for Microsoft and uh, uh, started paying sorry. attention, more attention. Sorry, yeah. Dennis. Uh, can you minimize your uh, go to meeting screen, please? Otherwise, oh, people yeah. more information. They say, can you please open your email box and bank account? <laughs> All right, that's good. Uh, 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 there's okay. overlap. Oh, no, it's high control panel, probably. Okay. Yeah, you can you can select under the play button. You can select just the PowerPoint, and that's what you should do. Then it will only uh, broadcast the PowerPoint. Under <clears throat> under the play button. Play button. I have power yeah, button. Just, yeah, yeah, just like you shared. Yeah, now I can only see your. Uh, your agenda. Is it good? I think, yeah, I, I, think, I think it looks good now. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Perfect. Sorry, I have just my laptop. I usually have like a couple of screens and using them or the RDP, but now I'm just with the laptop because uh, I decided to be like uh, to have a full experience of the conference. And instead of uh, doing this from home, I'm doing this from the hotel, uh, from the lobby. Uh, and I was preparing my session uh, in the room uh, last night. So like full experience of the conference, almost. I don't see anyone. Uh, so again, the agenda, random things in a random order, because I want to uh, talk about uh, the uh, basics of the protocols and how the protocols work, because uh, I, I see a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding on uh, like uh, when uh, someone is trying to say that our, our protocol is doing this and that uh, because uh, we are better and uh, this session is more about uh, uh, about the uh, myself uh, this session is more about the basics uh, in technology uh, not uh, comparison but uh, I will talk about other protocols as well So the basics of remote protocols. All the remote protocols uh, that uh, are today in the market, and I'm talking about remote protocols for Windows, and it includes uh, RDP, it includes uh, Cedric SCA, VMware Blast, Teradish PCRP, RGS, uh, uh, Nutanix Frame, uh, well, so like uh, uh, TJX, all of them are using same set of technologies and uh, some 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 of the protocols are using them better some uh, uh, protocols are using more technology than others uh, but uh, everyone is uh, in the same place where they start uh, and the same place is called host side rendering so if you are like many of you are long enough in the industry and you know uh, the, the, the protocols for a long time uh, you might remember that uh, when RDP, when ICA were just introduced, uh, there were uh, protocols that were remote in graphics that were composed on the client side. So it was like GDI uh, remoting uh, and then GDI plus remoting. And it was working fine with Windows uh, 
NT with Windows 2000, uh, it was okay. With Windows XP, it wasn't so good because at that time uh, there was uh, like a better, like uh, the, the, the window, Windows UI became more graphical and there was more, more graphics uh, in the user interface and the remoting of, of, of those components were not ideal. Uh, and uh, like starting with Windows 7, uh, majority of the protocols and by majority of the protocols I'm, I'm primarily talking about RDP and ICA at the time, uh, those protocols were starting uh, using the new technology called hot site rendering. Uh, it was caused because of the DWM, the all favorite components uh, from Windows that uh, were introduced in Windows Vista and uh, was uh, enabled by default in Windows 7. And uh, since uh, Windows 8, you are not able to disable it. And therefore, all of the legacy rendering or legacy protocols uh, are not working. Uh, so basically, uh, the remoting of the RDP today, uh, or remoting of the remote session today, consists of taking the screenshot of the full screen desktop. Uh, and this screenshot, if you take it in a raw format, it's uh, about eight megabytes uh, for 1080p image, and it's like four times more for 4K. Uh, and then uh, take the screenshot at uh, some high frame rate and try to send it uh, to the client. So. Uh, in the physical world, it uh, usually ends up, ends up with a monitor trying to uh, to scan out the, 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 the frame buffer uh, at 30 uh, hertz, uh, and uh, it ends up at about uh, 238 megabytes per second uh, for, for 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 the for the monitor itself. Obviously, uh, this kind of bandwidth is not uh, common for the internet for for the networking. And uh, therefore, the remote protocols are trying to take this huge image uh, and somehow compress it and send it uh, to the to the client. And this session, uh, and this desktop image is coming from the session. And there are different different types of the sessions uh, happening uh, on Windows, and it can be console session. Uh, and the console session is exactly console session when you have a, a physical desktop with a physical GPU uh, where monitor is connected uh, to the physical GPU, a physical monitor. And uh, what you see on the screen of that uh, monitor is actually a console session. Uh, if you use a uh, remote protocol to connect to the physical desktop, uh, the console session is not going away. You are switching your uh, uh, log on session to the different monitor, which will be remote, uh, but uh, the console session stays on the console. There's another session uh, called session zero. Uh, it's a session that doesn't have for any output uh, to the screen, usually, except a few conditions. And it's a session where all the services are uh, running. Uh, we have a remote session. A remote session is a session, uh, obviously from the name, it's a, a session where we have a user uh, and this user is remote and accessing uh, the display remotely. We can have a temporary uh, RDP session. Temporary RDP session happens when you try to authenticate when you log in into the uh, to the desktop uh, using RDP protocol and you see the log on screen. So uh, for some reason, uh, is it because of it uh, in a way it was disabled or credit SSP was disabled or because you uh, specifically uh, configured uh, the, 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 the network or using some legacy client, you may log on to, to the RDP session and see the logon prompt. Or uh, you, you may see this when your remote session is locked. So this is actually a temporary RDP session and that is created just for the lock screen. Uh, the child session, that is a uh, uh, same logon session, but uh, uh, you can RDP into your own logon session with the special parameters to the activized control and uh, have processes running on the separate desktop. Uh, could be VM connect in cancel session when you're using Hyper-V uh, and trying to connect to the VM. It could be remote app session and there's uh, uh, early Frankenstein remote effects session, which act, acts as a remote session, but in fact, it's a console session. And I'm so glad that it's 
no longer supported. And I hope everybody is happy, especially Thomas. Now, okay, what we have about sessions. Uh, console with remote. So one of the topics in my agenda uh, that was published uh, uh, in, the, in the conference is uh, comparison between, between council and remote session. So starting, I would say, from Windows uh, Vista, uh, there is no such thing like, like, a, uh, like a console session uh, in the same way like it was uh, in, in Windows XP or Windows 2000. Uh, the session is mapped to the physical console, could be mapped to the physical console, but it could be uh, mapped to the, to the remote. As example, uh, you may see uh, this behavior when you use uh, RDP uh, connecting to a client operating system uh, like Windows 7 or Windows, 7 or Windows 10, uh, or if you're using uh, Windows Server and you're connecting uh, remotely to the physical desktop, you can see that you can uh, steal the console session and make it remote. Uh, this applied mostly to RDP. It also applied to uh, to Citrix uh, ICA when it's running on a multi-session operating system. It applies to VMware uh, Blast when it's running on multi-session operating system. Uh, you can steal the physical console session. Most of the uh, VDI products uh, today on the market uh, that are working with uh, a single session, uh, and uh, I'm talking about uh, Citrix virtual desktops, not apps or apps. Basically, if you run the uh, VDA on the single session operating system, uh, VMware View, uh, TRDG PCRP, uh, when installed, is a standard to graphics client. Uh, uh, you actually mirroring the console session. Uh, so you take the console session that is shown on a local display, on a local monitor, and uh, it is mirrored into the, uh, in the remote session. RDP, since Windows Vista doesn't do uh, these things, uh, it doesn't uh, mirror the console session except remote FX sessions. Uh, we Instead, we are always using remote session if you uh, if you're running on the, uh, if, even if you're uh, running on a single, uh, in, in, in a single operating system scenario. So the real difference between console and remote session from the operating system is almost um, snow like this because all the processes are running in the same way. All the, like most of the components are running in the same way. Uh, and uh, like in case of RDP, uh, every time you connect to the single cell, uh, single single user operating system, single session operating system, uh, if you're using uh, Citrix, you connect into the console. If you're using Teradish, you connect into the console. If you're using RDP, you connect in a remote, you, you connect in using Terma Survey. So the real difference is how the session is brokered. It is always brokered by Terma Survey. Uh, but uh, it can be brokered to the console where it's mirrored, or it can be just remote, uh, like in case of RDP. And the real difference in the application behavior usually comes uh, uh, from uh, uh, the guidelines that uh, Microsoft published it a long ago, uh, guidelines for ISVs, how to build the application uh, for terminal server. And uh, in those guidelines, uh, there's uh, like a recommendation. If you detecting that this session is remote, try to minimize uh, the graphics utilization, try to reduce the animations, uh, uh, remove splash screens, uh, etc. And uh, there is instruction how to uh, actually find is the, se is the session console or remote. And, uh, and it's a basic call to the Windows API. Uh, and uh, what is interesting, when we were building the Windows 10 uh, multi-session, Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, we found that there is a lot of Windows components. The built-in applications, some Windows components uh, within Windows, uh, Windows 10, uh, they call this API and they uh, turn off animation, turn off uh, some uh, uh, transparency effects, uh, turn off uh, other stuff. There was about uh, uh, 
it was before me, but uh, I was told that it was about 5,000 lines of code that are inside the windows were different for different scenarios, is it console or remote? And uh, one, of, one of the efforts of uh, building uh, Windows 10 multi-session was uh, to go through the operating system components and uh, modify them to make sure that the users, when they are running remotely, they will have the best experience uh, no matter is it remote session or console session. So uh, all those changes apply to both multi-session operating system and the single se uh, session operating system. Now, uh, what it means in practice that uh, your Windows 10, regular, regular Windows 10, uh, starting from, uh, I think, uh, 1803, uh, perform visually better than uh, previous versions of Windows 10. In the remote session, because we lot of components uh, no longer reduce the functionality in the remote session. Now, when I'm talking about uh, uh, the Windows components and the operating system itself, and uh, remember, I started with uh, uh, description of what we actually are grabbing and what we are sending to the, to the client. It is actually. Uh, driven by the, by the process called the Windows Composition. In Windows Composition, uh, it's uh, like, uh, it's very complex topic, I would say, but uh, I, I would like to uh, simplify it by, with this small diagram. So on the physical desktop, uh, when you have some applications running on your Windows desktop, uh, what is happening? The applications take the content somewhere and it like it can be like video uh, video file that is played by by the application uh, or it can be like browser uh, taken fetching the content uh, from internet and uh, then render it so application has a render pipeline in case of browser it uh, composed the application composed the, the, the image of the web page uh, or video player uh, decode the the video and uh, produce the frames uh, and uh, those components are rendered by the application. They can uh, use the GPU, they may not use GPU. Uh, on top of that, we have other applications that are part of Windows, like Windows Explorer that, uh, uh, that uh, render the, your desktop, uh, like uh, Start Menu, uh, Cortana or Favorites. All those components are rendering their small pieces and then they uh, generate the like the bitmap, uh, which is uh, stored in the application frame buffer, and then uh, operating system compositor, which is called uh, DWM, Desktop Windows Manager, take uh, those bitmaps from different applications and according to the order of the window on the screen, uh, compose the final bitmap. And it's a huge bitmap. Uh, it's like uh, pixel, uh, uh, your, it's in size of your resolution uh, with, uh, uh, with color density of uh, 32 bits, uh, and it is uh, stored in the memory of either, uh, in the physical world, it's stored in memory of physical uh, GPU, and then the, the GPU scans this uh, memory uh, like 30 times per second uh, for 30 hertz or like 60 times per second uh, and uh, convert it to the actual image on the display. So that's how it works on the uh, physical world. And uh, what happens when we do the remoting, uh, what we basically add here, what we change here, is instead of uh, the GPU adapter scanning out it uh, to the monitor, we have a protocol that captures this graphic and send it uh, to, the, to the network. And there are only a few ways of uh, capturing graphics uh, for, for, the, uh, for the protocol. And uh, those ways are either deprecated uh, XDDM driver. Uh, it's a method that were, were used by RDP before Windows uh, 19, 1909 or 1903. Uh, it's a method that uh, uh, was used by most of the partners and most of the partners like Citrus and VMware are moving away from this mod uh, already. Uh, there was another deprecated uh, feature which is called uh, NVIDIA Frame Buffer Capture. Uh, this functionality is still used by 
uh, Citrix, when you use uh, uh, SDX3D Pro, it's still used by uh, Teradici, and I'm pretty sure it was used by VMware, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, so it's a, it's like a backdoor into the uh, graphics adapter where uh, instead of capturing the desktop image from the operating system components, uh, the graphics adapter NVIDIA graphics adapter in this case provide the API to peek into the uh, memory of the graphics adapter and uh, still uh, grab the image uh, of the desktop from, from there. So this uh, feature wasn't really scalable uh, and uh, it, uh, it was breaking some of the security features uh, in Windows like uh, content protection. Uh, and I'm happy that uh, VMware actually deprecated this feature uh, starting from the Windows 10 1909. And uh, I hope they will remove it soon and everybody will move to the standard interfaces that are mentioned on this slide. It's uh, either desktop duplication API, DirectX uh, dis display desktop duplication API, DDA, or indirect display driver. It's a new feature that is uh, uh, heavily used by RDP today, and uh, most of the vendors like Citrix and VMware already uh, made their uh, code changes and implementations, and uh, uh, they're using it as well. So, there is the strange thing that you see on the screen. I actually was surprised because uh, for most of my career, I was primarily working uh, with uh, Citrix or uh, or RDP. And uh, uh, in many cases, I was uh, like trying to use more uh, multi-session operating systems where we have like remote sessions all the way. And uh, uh, with uh, this COVID pandemic, uh, what I found, I found uh, on one of our partner website, uh, there was a recommendation what to do if you are uh, in pandemic and trying to work remotely and you have a computer, physical computer that is staying in the office and you want to connect using their product. What to do with, uh, with the monitor? And I found that uh, when most of the protocols that are working with the console session, when they uh, trying to uh, duplicate this desktop using DDA or using a XDDM driver. Uh, they actually have uh, output uh, of the console to the console, to the monitor. So everyone who, uh, like uh, uh, somebody is who is cleaning the office uh, with disinfectors, they can actually see what's happening on the monitor. And uh, uh, in many cases, um, most of the vendors, they are, uh, artificially blanking the screen by painting the black rectangle in the size of the screen. But uh, in many cases, in many cases, it doesn't really work. And like, uh, oh, the obvious recommendation, okay, let's just disconnect the, unplug the monitor, and it would be uh, like almost like you have it uh, on, the, on, the, on the hypervisor. But the problem that if you disconnect monitor, you will not be able to set the resolution because there is no physical monitor. So the recommendation from the vendor on their web, uh, website uh, is to buy the HDMI flake monitor it, and plug it into the graphics adapter. So th there is a small thing that costs like about $6 that you could plug in uh, to your GPU uh, output and uh, it will act as a monitor. And uh, that's like a workaround that uh, some of the uh, solutions have. So as I said, uh, we need to capture the, the frame to send it to the client. And there uh, are uh, different modes, as I described it, we have like ZDM, uh, that was legacy. But uh, of two supported features, and uh, features that are like Microsoft recommends to use and uh, NVIDIA recommends to use as a uh, solution replacing in the, uh, in the frame buffer capture, IDD is different. ID, IDD is in this indirect display driver. Uh, it is designed for the fake monitors. It is designed for the scenarios where though there is no real monitor. And uh, with IDD, your uh, your screen resolution is not limited by capabilities of the graphics adapter that you have. The screen resolution is not limited uh, by the capabilities of 
uh, non-existent graphics adapter. Basically, uh, if you run it on the VM and then do not have any GPU, uh, with IDD, you can set up any kind of resolution that is possible on the client. So everything is controlled by the client side uh, and the, by, by the protocol capabilities. With DDA, you have to have either physical adapter with a physical monitor attached, uh, or you have to write the uh, emulated monitor. And that's what uh, uh, most of the vendors do today, uh, like Citrix, VMware, Teradici, uh, they, they have, uh, oh, Citrix and VMware, not Teradici. They have a, a fake monitor presented in the system. And another bad thing about DDA that uh, DWM, the desktop compositor, is actually renders the desktop twice when you use the, uh, DDA. It means twice more memory. It means uh, twice more, not twice more, but a little bit more CPU resources to uh, render the desktop image twice. Because the name of the feature that is used to, to, to grab the component, to, to grab the graphics, is desktop duplication API. It's actually duplicated on the display. So what happens next with, uh, with the, those graphics? OK, we grabbed uh, the, the image. And uh, uh, in case of uh, protocols like, uh, like old protocols, I would say, like RDP and ICA, there is a classification happening of the content type. Uh, and uh, like in case of RDP, we are able to classify, we, we, are, we are able to find uh, the text on the screen, we are able to find image content uh, and video and animations. Uh, remember, I'm talking about uh, uh, each individual frame. Every time application renders something, every time uh, DWM composes this, we get a frame that looks like a bitmap. Uh, and we go through this frame every time it's eight megabytes for 1080p and trying to classify it. Uh, so because it's individual frame, the video detection and animation detection requires us to track multiple frames at the same time. So that's like to make sure that you're not confused how we get the video uh, from a single frame. So we, what we do in RDP and I'm pretty sure other protocols doing, uh, we are, we use different methods like uh, motion detection. Uh, it is all of those methods that I'm going to talk about are used to reduce amount of data that is sent over the wire. But at the same time, we're trying to uh, feed this in the uh, in specific time frame to make sure that we are not increasing the encoding latency and we're not uh, uh, like dropping frames because we just. Uh, too slow to analyze this data. Because remember, when applications render, they are expect that uh, there will be a GPU adapter that scan out the frame buffer 30 times, at least 30 times per second. So they are not, uh, uh, not most of the applications are not designed to, to, uh, to send the graphic uh, like a few seconds later. Okay, so what we do to reduce the amount of, of the data on, on, on the network, we uh, do the image classification, then we do the motion detection. And this motion detection uh, applies to both like scrolling, and it's uh, it can be like web page web page scrolling or uh, something like Mario, uh, or it's a motion detection for the videos when uh, we use the algorithms that are presented in video codecs to detect the motion uh, of uh, different types of content within the uh, frame, within the video frame. Uh, to produce the smooth uh, user experience, we use RDP progressive codec. Uh, RDP is not unique in this. Uh, uh, different uh, vendors call it differently. Sometimes uh, some companies call it progressive. Some companies uh, uh, call it uh, speed screen uh, or build to lossless. So basically, if the network uh, is not capable to uh, pass the full, full quality image uh, in a, a short time, we are trying to send the reduced uh, quality of the image. Uh, and then we increase in quality if this, is, if this image is static and we uh, show the best quality at the end. 
this uh, gives the user perception of uh, uh, instant uh, appearance of the image, but at the same time, we can give uh, the, the best quality at the end. Uh, some vendors call can, can, can have different limits on lower quality and higher quality in RDP, uh, dependent on your settings. We can uh, adjust the lowest quality, but the highest quality is always 100%. So uh, we don't use this term, but you can call RDP uh, built to visually lossless. It's not lossless. We have a different profile for that, for a fully lossless image. But uh, uh, it's, it is visually lossless. No matter uh, what you set up, you cannot lower the quality uh, if you have enough uh, bandwidth and enough uh, CPU resources. <coughs> and no matter what uh, kind of progress uh, rendering, uh, progressive rendering we use. The, the uh, text is always rendered with the uh, highest, highest possible quality. Uh, in uh, different protocols, uh, in most of the protocols uh, uh, available in the market, we have uh, caching in memory or on the disk. And uh, I'm pretty sure that most protocols already had uh, their uh, vulnerabilities with the cache and uh, uh, the cache must be stored securely. It doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, always encrypted, but it means at least it uh, has a basic protections like ACLs and not storing the, the cache in the common location uh, like uh, program data. Another method of uh, reducing the amount of traffic uh, is uh, downsampling. Uh, in many cases, uh, our customers, especially when they use 4K monitors or like large, other large resolution monitors, uh, they uh, set a scaling factor uh, like 150%, 200%, uh, sometimes it can be like 400%. And uh, the image uh, on the server side it is uh, uh, initially, which was initially in one format, and it's upscaled uh, by the DWM on the server side. And uh, then we try to pack it, uh, send it to, to the client, and it's like four times bigger or two times bigger than it was uh, in the original format. So uh, all, like RDP, I know for sure that RDP do this, and I know for sure that uh, ICA do this. There's uh, like uh, downsampling uh, technologies that uh, take the image and try to find the original format of the image before send it over the, over the wire and then upscale it on the client side using the uh, client side uh, scaling factors. Video classification, as I said, uh, all the protocols, all they have in the beginning is uh, uh, the bitmap of the desktop. And uh, this bitmap can change at some frame rate and uh, you need to find uh, uh, if there are any videos there. So uh, the options are either try to detect this using some smart technologies or try to hook into the applications and uh, basically monitor when somebody is launching media player or uh, Google Chrome with a video frame and uh, take those as a hint to the protocol. Or in many cases, uh, all the protocols today can do the full screen video encodings using the video codecs. And video codecs uh, can be offloaded to the hardware this uh, process doesn't usually save the network traffic, but it saves a lot, a lot of the resources on the server. And uh, if you think that video is only used when you use, when you watch video, it is not. In many cases, uh, I'm not talking about scenarios when uh, you use uh, the full screen video encoding like you have with, uh, uh, with RDP, uh, AVC 444 profile or uh, with BLAST or with uh, Teradici PCRP Ultra, or with uh, Citrix full screen uh, profile. Uh, even when uh, protocols are using part screen remoting uh, like RDP and ICA in the default settings, uh, the protocol always detect fast moving images as a video. And if you have uh, something like AutoCAD is working, uh, it can be detected as a video and encoded the video uh, using the video codec. And hardware uh, could save you a lot of resources. 
uh, most of the protocols, uh, except few ones, uh, are actively monitoring the network uh, and trying to uh, find uh, their uh, bandwidth available uh, and uh, trying to find the latency. Uh, and based on that, the uh, protocol can control. And in case of RDP, it doesn't do that. Uh, protocol can uh, change the quality, change the frame rate, reduce the frame rate, uh, prioritize the uh, different virtual channels, and adjust the coded parameters. Now, talking about uh, frame rate. Uh, that's the uh, last big topic, I think, because I have uh, just a few minutes left. Uh, so, talking about frame rate, there are a lot of misunderstanding that I see about the frame rate. So, first of all, what kind of frames happen? Uh, so, when application renders something, it's application rendering frames per second. Basically, if uh, you have a uh, web browser and you open the web page, it takes a few frames to render the image by creating the text content and place the, the images there, uh, maybe uh, start some some animation. And then uh, application will st stay still without any new frames, except there is an animation or except there is something happening on the screen. The mouse, as example, usually is not considered as part of the screen. In most of the cases, in most of the protocols, mouse is so-called hardware mouse that is presented as a separate surface and is actually uh, merged to the desktop image on the client side. So the mouse movements are not rendering any content. The application uh, controls what is rendered. And if you have a, uh, just a Windows desktop that uh, doesn't have anything there uh, other than the, the, the clock, uh, your frames would be generated uh, once a minute. Now, the next uh, so is something that is actually rendering the frames, like video. You can have default video with, with 25 frames per second, or you can have like 60 frames per second video, or maybe find something like a game that generates like 200 frames per second. So this application that generates 200 frames per second, uh, and in fact, okay, having in mind that it's like using GPU, uh, will still be bounded by composition. How often the stop windows manager uh, picks up this image and compose it uh, from like what small components compose the full desktop. So uh, by default, uh, it would be uh, the same frame rate as your monitor. And in remote protocols, it can be uh, adjusted. Now protocol grab those images and uh, tries to uh, encode them. And it will only grab those images that uh, it's able to handle. Basically, if protocol is slow and not optimized, uh, it will drop the frames because it not, it's not able to pick it up. Uh, then it will, the protocol, every protocol will try to reduce number of frames because uh, there might be situation when application uh, change the flag or change something on the screen, but it's actually not visible. Like you, uh, like uh, you have a, a clock in the application and it's changing. Application renders it, but in fact you have another window on top, and your result is your your change is invisible. So most protocols will detect the, those and drop the frames uh, without even encoding them. Then those frames will be sent to this to the client side. Uh, client side, and uh, uh, some of some of the frames in in some cases can be dropped by the network. Uh, and but anyway, when they receive, they there is always like a decision: should we even present them? Because some frames may arrive later than others, and uh, uh, therefore there is no need to present. And finally, there's a client monitor scan out where the monitor. Uh, scans the memory of the local client graphics adapter to present. Now I see that uh, I have like ton of slides left, but I can conclude on this topic. Alex, I think it's time. Yeah, you can have a couple of more minutes, definitely. Okay, I uh, since I have a couple of minutes, uh, let me conclude this with. Uh, few illustrations. So when the frames are rendered, 
and the display it's always different uh, like uh, you see in different scenarios you can he have more frames rendered uh, than actually uh, presented on, on the client in some scenarios uh, like movies and TV uh, you you can or, or videos you can you can find that there's more frames rendered than uh, sorry more frames presented than was actually rendered and it happens because of the progressive codec that is sending the same frame with multiple uh, quality settings. Uh, based on the uh, uh, technology that is used for frame grabbing, you can have either uh, like same number of frames captured and sent, or uh, you have you can have much larger number of frames rendered but actually wasted because protocol is not picking them up. What we do in a printing system, which is like why I'm working for Microsoft, so we're trying to improve things. And uh, uh, just a comparison between uh, Windows 10, 1903, and actually it's 4. Uh, you can see that just a rendering pipeline is now faster, especially in some media, uh, media scenarios. Uh, we can render more frames than previously. And finally, protocol war is over. Uh, it's, it's a comparison of different protocols and how they uh, uh, generate the frames and how they produce the frames for output. You can see that all of them are different, uh, but uh, the good thing that, um, yeah, the good thing that I'm, I, I don't name the names because I'm working for vendor and I'm not going to do that. Uh, but protocol war is over. Microsoft is doing a lot of things to help our partners uh, to uh, build on the modern technologies available in Windows. We are uh, we are publishing the, all of the interfaces. We have a uh, event for developers happening every year, except this year, obviously, uh, where we uh, invite everyone who every every, every vendor uh, that. Uh, want to implement something uh, around the protocol. And if you are working for such vendor, or if you're just curious and uh, you want to come to Microsoft for a week and uh, uh, participate in the event for, for the RDP developers or remote protocol developers, uh, you open, you, 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 you are welcome to, to, uh, to come, it's free. Uh, we are providing a lot of APIs and support for all the protocol vendors and uh, we are trying to make sure that the protocols are actually commodity and uh, uh, that we have uh, protocols designed for uh, special use cases and special needs and therefore there's a QA but I don't have a time for that thank you yeah well thanks very much there are a couple of questions uh, and I have assigned them to you and I guess we're just going to take the questions outside. Okay, so should I read somewhere or uh, answer them? Yeah, there is, a, there is a, for example, a question. Let me see. <clears throat> um, question from Tobias. Uh, what plans, if any, are there to improve the synchronization between audio and video and RDS? This is an issue in all audio for, uh, video formats that has been provided so, ever. This is special uh, we, of an issue with large format 4K and above formats with gaming and other high speed video applications. Uh, there, there are definitely plans to improve. We have a audio video sync, uh, but we have plans to improve in uh, in many uh, in many scenarios. So we are, uh, switching to the more optimal codec, uh, supporting uh, uh, obviously for WVD, we are planning to enable uh, UDP with RDP short pass uh, pretty soon, uh, and uh, this will improve uh, the, the, the the throughput over the network, and uh, it will uh, improve the audio video sync as well because we'll be able to send more packets. Uh, we uh, switched uh, some of the control channels to the uh, different uh, technology, I would say. Uh, so yeah, we, we're working on this as well. This is uh, one of the topics uh, that I've heard. Uh, uh, and it, it actually depends on the scenario. We also, like for, for the video playback, uh, we are working on the uh, future versions of uh, 
multimedia redirection, uh, which will have this like basically ideal because uh, both audio and video would be rejected in, in the same stream. All right, okay. Well, thanks very much. It was a very deep and uh, interesting question. I definitely learned uh, some stuff. Some stuff even I as a SMVP did knew about uh, there was some good stuff. All right, well, thanks very much. There are still some questions for you, Dennis, left. Um, those questions will be staying up until the uh, end of the webinar. So if you'll have some time to answer them, that would be great. Okay. All right, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Thank you.